I'm Steve for This With Cars and today I'm back with my 1960 MG MGA. In the previous videos I got the engine running and I put a new fuel tank in. Right now I still have an overflowing trunk full of parts for this car so today I thought I would sort those out and put as much stuff onto the car as I can. Looking back here in the trunk let me get the side curtain and this tonneau cover out of the way first. Okay, now we can dig in here. So here's the speedometer. Open, yeah, here's the tachometer. Get those put in first. I'm sure that most people are familiar with how this works, but for those who haven't worked much on their car yet, this clamp right here is what holds the gauge in. So it's actually really easy to remove the instruments from one of these cars. You just unscrew these nuts here. And then this bracket, I have to get these lock washers off of here first. And then this bracket just clamps the gauge onto the dashboard. This is pretty much how it works on almost all of the British cars that are from this era and older. So if you have a problem with one of your gauges, it's actually really easy to pop out. On your uh, tachometer and speedometer from a car like this, you'll have a cable that goes into the back of it that you need to unscrew. The light that lights up the backlighting, it just pops right off. And of course, if you have a gauge that is run by electrics instead of cable or a water tube, you can pop the gauge out of the dashboard and that usually gives you really good access to removing the electrical connections from the gauge. Then you can pop it out and you can send it off to be rebuilt or uh, take it apart yourself, whatever you're needing to do with it. To put these clamps on, you could crawl under the dashboard but usually, I just do it by feel. Try not to lose your little lock washers when you put them on the studs. I like to slide them on all the way so that they don't accidentally pop off. And then your aluminum nuts. Your light bulbs, they just push in. Well, that's a start, two less pieces in the trunk. Let's see what else is in this box. These are the lenses for the front turn signals and parking lights. Oh, look at that, that's a full set of brand new knobs for the car. So there should be a gasket that goes in here and that will allow this to be held tighter. There should also be a bulb right here. There we go, that just twists on. And you can see how loose that is. That's because the gasket is not there. But if I don't start taking these parts and start making a list of what I need, uh, it's gonna take me forever to get the car together. So this is why I'm taking all the parts and putting them where they go so that I know what I have and I know what I need. This bag is just some electrical connectors and a crimping tool, so this doesn't belong in this car. This box here, this was the brand new hubcaps, wheel covers. This one here is the stuff that we need next. These are brake parts. Over here on the passenger floor is our pedals, which we're going to need. Well, I thought I had the master cylinder for this car somewhere, so I've emptied everything out, and the only thing I've found is a mouse nest. Well, since I can't find the master cylinder, let's go back and look through the crates of MGA parts I have, see if we can find one. Since I started this MGA, I did put together an MGA parts car, so the master cylinder may have gone with that. Here's my boxes of MGA parts, and look at that. Master cylinder sitting right on top here. So this is what we need. Okay, let's see if we have enough parts here to put this together. So obviously we have our master cylinder here. And 
And this bracket right here is what holds the master cylinder. And this bracket is what holds everything else. So this will go on the bottom. This will go like that. We'll have our master cylinder setting in here. Our pedals will be going through this hole right here. On top of our pedals, we have this gasket, which I probably should order a new one. Then on top of that, this metal flange. And it looks like we do have both of the push rods for that. So we have one for the brakes and one for the clutch. There's a couple bolts here. Looks like those are probably the bolts that hold the master cylinder in. And luckily the pedals still have the bolt that they pivot on. So I think we do have all of the pieces we need here. These nuts are seized on here. I'll be right back. I need to clean these off with the wire wheel. Okay, I've got my bolts cleaned up. I did grab another lock washer because one was missing. The pedals are not the same. So as you can see, they're only going to fit one way. It's kind of awkward to hold everything together. You have this little spacer that goes between the pedals. You need to balance that so that that is centered. Now I can attach the push rods to the pedals. It will go on like this. Now you can get a better idea of how this works. The master cylinder is going to sit up here. These push rods go in there. The master cylinder bolts up just like that. So now when you push down on the pedal, it's going to push the push rod back push the cylinder in the master cylinder back and send out the hydraulic fluid down to the brakes or to the clutch. So the good news is it looks like I have everything. The bad news is I probably need to rebuild the master cylinder or get a new one. I just went to look through the new parts that I've ordered for this car and I already have a brand new master cylinder. That's probably why I took the other one and threw it back with my parts but I ordered this from Moss Motors uh, probably when I first started working on this car and it's been sitting around ever since. So I can bolt this master cylinder here into this bracket and then everything is pretty much ready to go into the car, but I do wanna wait until I can get a new one of these. Um, I don't want air blowing uh, from the engine bay down through this hole and into the cabin of the car. So I'm gonna wait until I get a new one of these before I install this in the car. So in that box, I did find the pads for the pedals. So I put the pedal pads on. I also transferred the old fittings from the old master cylinder to the new one. So the master cylinder bolts back here to the firewall right there. So our pedal assembly will sit over there underneath the master cylinder. And you can see the hole in the floor there where the pedals are going to be going through. And since this is a British car, it's set up for both right hand and left hand drive. So on this side, where we will not be putting the pedals, we have another one of these that is just blank. That gets bolted onto there to cover up this hole. There was only one more major piece that I saw in here and that was the washer bottle and the bracket that holds it. If it's a pretty large piece from now on, if it's not on the car, I probably don't have it and need to order one. So you can see the washer bottle just sets in that bracket. There's a couple bolts that go through the bottom of the bracket. And right here next to the heater, you can see those small holes there and that's where the washer bottle bolts on. Okay, the washer bottle is in place. I pulled out all the screws that were holding the heater up so that that can set down where it's supposed to go. I am not going to screw that down yet. I wanna make sure that that doesn't leak before I put the screws in it. But I think things are really coming along under the bonnet here. Well, it looks like I need some parts before I can go any further, but at least now I have a really good plan on the next steps of getting this car running and driving. And at least for the first time in a long time, I'm able to close the boot lid. If you wanna see more videos on my 1960 MG MGA, Comment below and click subscribe.